Let's praise him tonight. Put your hands together. Come on, say risen, risen. He's risen forever glorified. Say risen. He's risen. King Jesus. King Jesus is. Come on, hands up. Did you come ready to praise him on a Wednesday night, church? Come on, put your hands together. Sing oh. Come on, lift your voice, sing oh. Say he's shining, shining like the sun, and breaking through the fear. Come on, say victory, 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 victory. Hallelujah! Come on, say Jesus, Jesus, be lifted higher. Hey, everybody, praise him. He's free. Believers alive, can you shout to the Lord tonight, church? Come on, give him a shout of praise. Resurrected one, resurrected one, shining safe, shining like the sun, and breaking through the fear. Come on, say victory, victory. Come on, say Jesus. Jesus, be lifted higher. We serve a risen Savior. Risen. Hey. He is risen. Ever glorify your name. Ever glorify your name. And we say risen. Come on, sing it out. That's what we believe tonight. He is risen. Can you just lift your hands and give them a praise tonight? Father, we praise you. Father, without you rising, without you conquering death, hell, and the grave, we wouldn't be standing here. But we're standing in freedom, and this is what we declare. The same power, the same power that crushed the end. Lift it up till I say, risen, hey, for, come on, lift your voice, shout, everybody say he, hey, forever glorified. Come on, shout it out tonight. Hallelujah, say. Hallelujah. Hey, come on, put those hands together. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, tonight I came to praise. 
So can you put your praise shoes on tonight? Everybody praise, come on. Hey. Oh, yeah. We praise your name. We praise your name. Yeah. Come on, sing it out tonight. You're the God. You're the God of signs and wonders. Come on, sing it out. And I'm in awe. I'm in awe. Your splendor, yeah. You are good, say. Come on, sing it out. And there's none like you, sing. No one greater. So this is what we declare, and we praise you, yeah. We love you, hey. We praise you. We love you, we lift you up, everybody sing it, hey, and nothing's gonna stop my praise, somebody shout to the Lord, hey, we have the victory, we came to praise the King of Kings. Come on, he's alive tonight. Let's sing it from the top one more time. And you're the God says, signs and wonders. Come on, say, and I'm in our head. Hey. Come on, sing it out that you are good beyond all measure. And you are good. Up and sing it out. Say we praise you, yeah. We love you. Hey, we praise you. We love you. We lift you up. We lift you up, yeah. Everybody. Hey, nothing's gonna stop my prayer. Somebody shout hallelujah tonight. Can somebody shout the name of Jesus tonight? That's what we came to do. Come on. Lift him up. Church, sit your voice, sing it out. Sing. Come on, sing it like you mean it tonight. Say nothing's gonna stop. Everybody sing it. For about 30 seconds, can you just praise him and lift up the name of Jesus? Come on, if you have to shout tonight, if you have to put your hands together, if you need to jump tonight, whatever you need to do to show the Lord that you came to praise him, right now is your time to do it. If you need to shout, thank you, 
If you need a shout glory, go ahead and praise him in your own way right now. Come on. We praise you, Lord. We magnify you tonight, Jesus. We give you all the praise, all the glory that you deserve. Spirit. 
Worship in tonight. You are everything, Lord, to me. All victory, all power. You prayed, you prayed. Oh, yeah. You reign in victory. You reign in victory. Come on, that's it. Lean into Him, lean into His presence tonight. God is here. Worship him. Open your mouth. Lift your hands. Lay down your burden. If you need to get to the altar and lay down your burden, get to the altar tonight. If you came in with heavy burden, heavy laden, lay it down tonight. God is here. Oh, God is here tonight. Take upon his peace. Take upon his joy. Oh, take upon his freedom. We're in a house of freedom tonight. Worship the king. is here church father we came expecting we came expecting father because we know tonight you're going to bring miracles miracles is here tonight father breakthrough is here tonight Jesus hallelujah Jesus
church lift it up tonight lift your hands to heaven sing it out we see Give it tonight, stand to your feet, and let's worship the King together. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, but love was greater. I can say.
It's a wonderful name, not another name that compares to the name of Jesus. It is the sweetest name, no one like you, Jesus, no one like you, Jesus. You have no rival. You Come on, somebody give him praise tonight if you love Jesus. Come on, somebody give Jesus praise. How many know that it's the name of Jesus that is powerful, that everything, everything will bow at the name of Jesus? How many are excited to be at church tonight? Can we give the Lord a big hand this evening? And let's thank the worship team tonight as they continue to play. I just want to make a very special announcement. Is the gang in the house tonight? And this Friday night, we want to invite you out. We're going to be having a powerful time of revival. Can someone say revival? Turn to the person next to you. Shake them up a little bit. Say, you ready to get revived this weekend? Now, listen. How many of us know that we're all young at heart? Amen? How many believe they're young at heart? Just wave your hand in the air if you're young at heart. So this Friday night, we want to invite you to come join us. All the young adults, all the young people. God's anointed now generation. And our very own pastor, Pastor Al, is going to be speaking Friday night to our generation. And we want to invite the whole entire church to come out. And also, we're going to be doing something very powerful. Because how many of us know we're celebrating 50 years of ministry this year, Victory Outreach. We are preparing our young people for World Conference 2017. And how many are excited for World Conference? Now, come Friday night because you're going to get a taste. We're going to have churches from all over Southern California that are going to be joining us. We have our San Diego County region. We have our San Diego County region, the Spanish, Alcanza Victoria. Also, we have the Inland Empire, San Bernardino region is going to be with us. And also some churches are going to be visiting us as well. So this place is going to be packed out. And we're just going to get a small, small taste of what's going to be taking place there at the World Conference with all of the Victor Irish family getting together to celebrate 50 years of ministry. And how many are excited for that? Amen. So will you do that? Will you come on back us up this Friday night? Will you back up the God, well, God's anointed now generation starting at 7 o'clock? Come join us. This place will be packed out. I'm going to ask you tonight to take hold of your Bibles this evening. And while you do that, I'd like to thank the Lord for my salvation. I'd like to thank God that he rescued me, saved me. And I was just a man that was hooked on drugs with no purpose. Come on, somebody. And how many know God is a good God? Amen. 
I also like to thank the Lord for our pastors. How many love Pastor Alan and Sister Georgina? Amen. Come on, give them a round of applause. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you, Georgina, for this privilege, this opportunity to come tonight. And I also like to thank the Lord for my beautiful wife, who's here, married a gang girl, who's down for Jesus. Come on, somebody. And how many of you know that we have the best youth ministry, God's Anointed Now generation, which we have the privilege to be part of and to serve, and so we're excited. So tonight, take your Bibles and go with me to Genesis chapter 15. I feel excited this evening to share uh, just in the next few moments about what God is going to do in our lives. And how many are ready to encounter with the Lord this evening? Amen? Amen. Genesis chapter 15, and let's just take a look at this scripture tonight and use this as our foundation as we read this portion of scripture this evening. Genesis 15, verse 5, and the Bible says, Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars if you're able to number them and he said to them so your shall your descendants be and he believed in the lord someone say he believed and he accounted into him for righteousness father we thank you for your word tonight i pray that every heart would be open to receive the word that you have for us let it take lodging in the place in the hearts of the people tonight and father we give you all glory and honor in jesus name and everybody says Turn to the person next to you say, are you ready for your blessed season? And you may be seated tonight. All right, we got the guys up here this evening. The title of my message is hashtag blessed season. I even got my shirt on tonight. Come on, somebody. Hashtag blessed season. So if you got your social media, you got your Instagram, your Facebook, your Snapchat, go ahead and hashtag it right now because how many know we are declaring that we are entering into this season of being blessed. How many of you have ever been so excited about something? You just, you don't want to talk about it, share about it. One thing about me, I love roller coasters. Come on, somebody, right? Roller coasters are like the best thing ever. The best, the roller coaster, my favorite roller coaster ride is Viper at Magic Mountain Six Flags. How many have ever been to Magic Mountain Six Flags? And how many of you know that when you're going up, you get this, little, this scary feeling of, oh, my gosh, this thing is going to stop. I don't know what's happening. You're speaking in tongues. You're praying. You're saying, God, please, what's going on, right? And then when you get to the top, how many know, right when you make that drop, that's like the greatest feeling of the roller coaster, right? I mean, roller coasters really mess with our emotions, don't they? They get us up. They get us down. They get us all around. Come on, somebody, right? We close our eyes. We open our eyes. We... We slobber all over ourselves, and then we get that nice picture where we're walking out, and we're like. How many know that when God blesses us, it's not a roller coaster ride? It's not, it's not a roller coaster ride. When God blesses us, how many know it's a consistent feel, a consistent joy that he places within our hearts? Tonight, I want to talk to us about going into the blessed season because I believe that every single one of us God is in the business of blessing our lives. And tonight, I believe that we're called to live a life of increase in favor. How many can agree with me here tonight? What's going on here in this passage of scripture with Abram, he was going through a time in his life where the Lord had called him. If you look at a few chapters back in Genesis chapter 12, God called them out of his country and called them into a land, a promised land. And what began to happen is Abram took a step of faith and he began to trust the Lord at his word, not knowing exactly what was going to happen. And how many know when God calls you and I into something, there's that, there's that unknown, right? There's that unknown that happens within our lives. And so here, as we look back at these, cha at these chapters, Abram was called out of the country and into the land that the Lord wanted to show him. He had no idea. All he did was he took a step of faith and he trusted the Lord. So here we are in Genesis chapter 15. And Abram needs a reassurance of his faith. In fact, he was at a age where he was childless, the Bible says. And he was there and he was asking the Lord, well, when am I going to have a child? And he was inquiring about the promise that was made to him. And so you could tell by his prayer that he was a little unsure if God was really going to bless him. See, I believe tonight that many of us in this room, we can relate with that because how many know that doubt sometimes creeps in? when we're waiting on God for his blessing. And sometimes we can get a little impatient. Come on, somebody, right? We can get ahead of God. 
We can start helping God out, right? Well, God, let me help you out here. Let me do this for you. Let me do that. Let me make some things happen here. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves in a bind. Come on, somebody. Or am I the only one? See, God wants to reassure you and I tonight that he's setting us up for the next season in our lives. Understand that each season has opportunities. We just recently witnessed the Chicago Cubs win a World Series. In over 108 years, there was, a, there was what they called the Bambino curse over the Chicago Cubs. And every year, there was disappointment in the fan base. Every year, there was disappointment in the coaching. Every year, there was disappointment in the players. But what happened this past year is they finally broke the curse and they won their first World Series in 108 years. I'm sure that every season when they evaluated, they began to look at all the victories, all the losses, all the trades and the transactions and the things that took place within the organization. And they, come to, and they came to a certain place saying, you know what? We need to break this curse and we need to move forward and obtain the victory. Each season will present an opportunity. And when you go into this next season, how many know God wants you to learn from the past season that you were in? Now, there's three things I want to talk about tonight and that God prepares for you, that God sets us up for this blessed season. Number one, he prepares us. Where's my preparation? Hashtag prepare. So if you're on social media, hashtag this, all right? God prepares you and I. He also positions us. God prepares us for the blessing. He positions us for the blessing, and this is the good part. He wants us to possess the blessing. Oh, I thought I'd get a little bit more claps than just one or two people. How many believe that God is preparing you for your blessing? How many are believing that God has positioned you for your blessing? And how many are believing that God has given you the ability to possess your blessing here tonight? See, when God calls us into the unknown, it's our responsibility as the people of God to respond by faith. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, chapter 6, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those that earnestly seek him. I want you to understand, in this preparation stage that God is calling you right now in, God is setting you up because he's testing our faith. He's, re he's seeing where our faith is at. He's seeing if, if we're getting discouraged. He's seeing if we're giving up hope. He's seeing, oh man, are we ready to throw in the towel? I want you to understand tonight that God is preparing you for this next season of your life to not only bless you, but to provide for you, to open doors for you, to start making way for you. And I believe with all my heart this evening that he's been preparing us. You see, the state, in this stage, this is where we got to let go of the old and get ready for the next. Abram had to move, leave his country. And God called him out of his country, called him out of his comfort. He called him out of the, the, the familiarity that he had within his life. And how many of us know as Christians, that's the hardest thing, right? We get so set in our ways. We get so set in what we do every single day. We've got our routine. Come on, somebody. We know exactly which cup of which cup we're going to use for coffee. Come on now. We know what we're going to do with this with the snooze button. We know exactly what we're going to do. We're, we're people that have routine. But how many know if we're gonna if we're gonna be believers and Christians that are gonna be blessed and move into this next season, then we need to be able to trust the Lord and let God prepare us so we can get out of the old and get into the next in what God has for you and I. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19, the Bible says, For I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. Oh, come on, somebody. God is already clearing some things up for you and I while we're here. He's already prepared a place for you. He's already prepared that promotion for you. He's already prepared that, oh, that car for you. He's already prepared that blessing for you. He's already prepared that salvation in your loved ones to come into the house of God, to get delivered, to get set free, to get transformed, because he's preparing his promises for you. You see, he's doing something new. He wants us to understand tonight that we're called to be new creations. I have it right here in bold letters. It's time to clean out the closet. Come on, somebody. And I'm going to be a little transparent. My wife's been on me about cleaning out my closet. Come on, somebody, right? And I said, okay, Lord, use this as an illustration. Use this as a Bible study because everything right now is a Bible study to me, right? You know, when you're just separating, you're asking God to show you certain things. You want that deep cut revelation from God, right? And I'm standing in my closet, and God says, time to clean out your closet, physically and spiritually. Come on, somebody. 
Because if God is going to prepare us, how many know we need to clean out the closet? We need to make room for the blessing. We need to make room for the next season, the next level, the next thing that God is getting ready to do within our lives. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but there's somebody in this room. You've been toiling. You've been praying. And the Bible says, do not grow weary in doing well, but in due season, you will reap a harvest. Your loved one is walking into this door of victory outreach, and we've got it set up for them because God has been preparing them for salvation. It's time to clean out the closet. And make room for more. We can't be people that live in the past. That stay stuck in the past. The old has gone and the new has come. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the old man has been put away. Listen, we serve a God who is the great I am and not the great I was. Listen, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's preparing these promises for you tonight. If he did it before, he'll do it again. And he'll continue to prepare us for that next season. See, have you ever thought these thoughts to yourself? Have you ever thought, well, God can't bless me. Well, I I, I never seem to have enough. It it just seems like I'm living from paycheck to paycheck. Hello. I I know God loves me, but why do these bad things keep... Have you ever had that? Come on, am I the only one? Why do these bad things keep happening to me? I know I can't make ends meet. Why are my kids being such a challenge? Come on, somebody, right? Why don't things get any better? I just can't shake, I can't shake this off. Well, I want you to understand tonight that God's thoughts are not our thoughts. And that his ways are not our ways. In Isaiah 55 verse 8, he declares that his thoughts are not your thoughts. So it's time to get those thoughts out of our mind and let the Lord prepare us for that next season. It's time to speak life into our situation. It's time to speak life into that circumstance. It's time to speak life into the things that we want God to move on our behalf. You see, in this stage, God prepares us by building our faith so we can walk in the blessings and not curse ourselves with these thoughts. God wants to bless you and I. He wants to bless you. Tell the person next to you, he wants to bless you. I know we came from different backgrounds. I know we came from a hard background. I know sometimes we can't accept it. But I want to tell you tonight that God wants to bless your life. And in this next season, get ready because he's preparing you. He's setting things up for you. You're going to be making double the income that you made last year. You're going to be getting into a new vehicle this year. You're going to be getting into a new home this year. You're going to see family come into the house this year. And you're going to see your faith even get stronger in the things of God. How many believe that here tonight? The Bible says, so a man thinking in his heart, so is he. I think we forget the power of a thought, don't we? That's why we need to sing hymns and praises to the Lord. Because in Acts chapter 16, the Bible says, when they sang hymns and praises to the Lord, chains began to be broken. Bondages began to be broken. People began to be set free. If we're going to be set free tonight, in our mind, and our thought, I mean, we got to continuously praise God for what he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do in our lives. He's preparing you for that next season. We forget, we get rattled up. And sometimes we settle for comfort. But in this next season, I want you to, I want you to buckle your seatbelts tonight. Because he's preparing you and he's going to bless you. And he wants you to experience blessings. Why does he want to bless you? Not so that you could just, you know, have it all. Come on, somebody, right? He wants to bless you so you could be a blessing to others. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, the Bible says God can give you all you need. And he'll even give you more than enough. You will have everything you need for yourselves, and you will have even enough left over to give when there is a need. Come on, somebody. How many know that God blesses us so we can be a blessing to others? God blesses you and I so we can walk in a lifestyle of generosity, a lifestyle of blessing others, a lifestyle of planting seeds, a lifestyle of help beautifying and building our church. Come on, somebody. How many know that we're going to be owners of this building in just a few short months? Why? Because we are experiencing the blessings of God so we can be a blessing to others. Abram was prepared when he was called out of his place of comfort. And later we find that he was called to be a father to many nations, a blessing that not only impacted that time, but it impacts you and I today. Because we're the seeds. We're the heirs of the seed of Abraham. See, God's covenant, his agreement never changes. It's you and I that change. Come on, somebody. We're the ones that get discouraged. 
We're the ones on that roller coaster ride. We get emotional. We get up and down. Well, God don't love me. Come on, somebody, right? God don't love me. He loves him more than he loves me. I want you to understand, God is not a respecter of person. He don't play favorites. His covenant is yes and amen. His promises are yes and amen. He's faithful to us even when we are not faithful to him. As he prepares us, he positions us. See, when God calls us, he positions us. In Genesis chapter 15, he says, and he brought him outside. He told Abram, go outside. Come outside, Abram. Come on, come outside. Let me show you something. Come outside. And he positioned him because in this stage of the blessed season, he positioned him so he could see that the blessing was on its way. It took action. And it took Abram to step out. In James chapter 2, verse 17, the Bible says, In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Which means you and I have a responsibility when God calls us to, to have a blessing. You know, the blessings will come, but how much though we have to have the faith to believe. And faith without works is dead, my friend. We need to trust and believe and understand. So when the time is there to say, okay, I'm stepping out. I want to give. The time is there when I want to step out and I want to be a blessing to someone. God positions you so you can be blessed. He positions you so he can continuously open the doors for your life. See, God will intentionally move things for you so that way you and I could be blessed, which means this, that you have to be willing to step out in faith. You know, there's key positions that God calls you and I to be in. Number one, he calls us to be more than a conqueror. Your position tonight is that in all these things, we are called to be more than conquerors through him who loves us, which is defined as this, one who conquers, one who gains a victory, one who subdues and brings into subjection or possession by force or by influence. See, God wants to give you and I the victory in this next season. You know, when we look at our past season, when we look at last year, we look at the year before, even last month, how many know that we learn from our mistakes? Can I get an amen? We learn from our L's, our losses. Hello, somebody, right? And we think to ourselves, well, if we could only do it better this time, right? We think to ourselves, if we could only ask God and be more patient, and we should have just waited on the Lord, and the right thing would have happened if only just waited. See, God positions us. And he sets us up so that way we're able to wait on him and trust him. And he's called us to be conquerors while this is happening. So while our faith is being tested, while we're being challenged, how many know that you have already had the victory in those areas of your life? That you've already been declared the victorious winner. That you've already been called to be the conqueror. That you've already called to be the head and not the tail. That you've already called to be past that situation. And yes, the process doesn't look good sometimes. And yes, it may not look good in front of you. But as long as you have the faith to believe, the faith to trust, and in that time you're praying through and you're asking God to show you, I just know, my friend, that you've been called to be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus, and he's going to give you the victory. He's called us to be conquerors, and he's also positioned us to be ambassadors. Come on, somebody. Imagine walking in your job tomorrow and say, I'm an ambassador of Christ. Not in a prideful way, not in a cocky way, but you're walking in as a child of God, as an ambassador for Jesus. An ambassador is defined as this, an official representative of a king or government. You represent Christ. I represent Christ. We're called to be ambassadors. God positions us. Why? Because he's called us to be a light in a dark world. He's called us to, so that way his glory could shine through our lives. So that way when we're getting blessed as Christians, come on somebody, people are going to ask, well, how's it? What's going on in your life? What's happening in your life? I was asked today at work, how come you have so much energy? Is it the monsters? Is it the coffee? Is it because, you know, you're just one energizer bunny? I said, no, it's because I got the power of God working in my life and he set me free. If you only knew what he did for me in that at men's home in victory outreach you would know why i have energy why i have life why i can't wait to wake up in the morning praising jesus because he's called me to be an ambassador see we see ourselves tonight we must see ourselves tonight while we're positioned as a child of the living god and when we see ourselves as children of the living god then how many know in this next season when you get blessed it ain't gonna be no surprise you're going to get faith. It's like you ever had one of those days where everything was in your way, right? Well, get ready because it's, everything is going to be in your way. I mean, everything is going to go your way. You're going to have the right parking spot. Come on, somebody. 
You're going to have, you're going to walk into Starbucks. Next, you know, you're in the front of the line while everybody's else waiting. Come on, right? Next, you're going to get a phone call about some good news. Come on, come on. Does anybody receive that? You're going to get a phone call about some good news. You're, all of a sudden, the favor is just going to, your business is just going to explode. Come on, somebody, right? And you're saying, man, it's because I've, man, I've been trusting God. I've been believing God, and I didn't get impatient, and I didn't move ahead of God, and, and I wanted to continue to be part. I wanted to continue to be a blessing. Guess what? God's getting ready to give you more. That's why you got to hashtag it tonight. Hashtag blessed season. You got to declare it tonight. You got to speak it tonight. Because whenever people see that happening within your life, the Bible says that we're epistles read by all men, which means this, is that they see the blessings and the favor upon your life, and they're going to ask you that million-dollar question. What is going on in your life? Why are you being so blessed? And you're going to say, my friend, it's because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he promised me, and he gave me hope, he gave me a future, and he said he was going to bless me so I could be a blessing to you. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. See, God's not a respecter of persons. He has no favorites. Come on, somebody, right? His blessings are available to every single one of us. The way we receive it is by faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So what do we need to do? We need to crank up our faith. Come on now. We're in the spiritual gym right now. And I'm your trainer right now. Come on, somebody. Hashtag blessed season. You got to just crank up those spiritual muscles, which means you got to give a little bit more. You got to pray a little bit more. You got to read a little bit more. You got to listen to double, double the messages you listen to every single. You just got to get in the presence of God and dig deep this year. Why? Because he's building your most holy faith. So that way you can receive the blessing. So that way you can be positioned to receive his promise. And I want you to understand that he's not a respecter of anybody. And he has no favorites. And he's getting ready to bless you and I. Which brings me to the last thing is this. He calls us to possess. God told the Israelites in Joshua to go and possess the promised land. And it appeared that the Jordan River was a barrier that was between the people and their promise. Have you ever had barriers between you and your promise? Oh, hello, somebody. Abram had a big barrier, right? The Bible says that he was of 80 years old and he was childless. And he was praying for an heir. An officer. He was praying for a promise, a son, a child, a big barrier that took place that was in his life. See, when God called the, when he told the Israelites to go and possess the promised land, there was, an, there was a barrier between them and the land of promise. And the river, which was at a stage where they thought to themselves, I can't cross this river. I got good news for you tonight. God loves to move in the impossible for you. Let me say that again. God loves to move in the impossible for you. All it takes is a simple people to believe and activate their faith. Remember, we're, we're, we need to activate our faith muscles. And if you could just taste the promise and see the promise and know the promise is on the other side, then my friend, no barrier is too big for the God that we serve. No barrier can come between you and your promise because you are a child of God. God knew that the Jordan River was there, and he told the Israelites to cross over. He just told them, cross over. And in their natural mind, they're thinking, man, how are we going to cross over? There's this big, you know, this big, wow. See, God wants us to think the impossible, to believe for the impossible tonight. He says in Joshua 1, 2, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people into the land which I do give them. It takes faith to believe. It takes faith to, to cross the river. It takes faith to go into the impossibility and say, God, you can move and you can do things on my, on my behalf. God didn't tell him to quit. He told him to move forward. And I'm here to tell you tonight, do not quit. Don't let that barrier come between you and your blessing. Don't let that barrier stop you from entering into this next season of your life. I'm here to declare to you tonight that this season evening that God wants you to embrace the blessings by believing him for the impossible so you can cross over that barrier of, of doubt, that barrier uh, of insecurity, that barrier of, oh, it's not going to happen to me, that barrier of, oh, that promise will never take place. I want you to know tonight that it's time to shift our thinking and start saying, God, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And tonight, if you called me, if you gave me a promise, then you're going to fulfill your word. 
In this next season, God wants you to embrace the blessings. You better get ready because you're going to get blessed. You better get ready because you're going to get blessed. Oh, if someone believe that here tonight. You better get ready because you're going to get blessed. The Bible says that Abram was accredited with righteousness because he believed, which is translated from the word Amon, which is where we get amen from. And how many know when we say amen, we agree in principle with the covenant and the promise that God has given to us. So when you're declaring amen tonight, it's not a religious word. It's not a religious duty. You're saying, yes, Lord, I believe in the promise. I believe in the blessing. I believe that you're going to let me possess the land without any barriers coming my way. So tonight, God, I'm ready to do the impossible. He compared the stars to Abram and he told, count it. Count it. As a metaphor to say, look how I'm going to bless you. I want you to go outside and look at the stars tonight. I remember when I was growing up, 323 East Taylor, Santa Maria, California. Come on, somebody. I had a neighbor, and I don't know if you ever did this before, but, you know, I was on some good stuff when I was a teenager. And I would sit on my roof, light up a marble. Come on, somebody. Actually, I was an Asian, so I did Newport. Come on now. Don't act like you don't know. Come on now. Some of you don't even use the filter. Come on, somebody, right? But I was on the roof, and I would look at the, all the stars, and I'd be on a good one. I'd be, like, tripping out, like, man, there's so many stars up there. There's, you can see the Little Dipper. You can see the constellation. You can see the galaxy. You see everything up there. And one time I was on a bad trip, right? And I thought to myself, it's like this is what I told my neighbor. I go, it's like God got his blanket and covered us and birds were trying to escape and they were poking holes at the blanket. That's what it looks like. I was on a good one. Come on, somebody, right? And I was like tripping out like, how does that happen? Have you ever tried to count the stars? It's like unlimited. It's like endless. And God is using this metaphor in, in comparison to even the sand and the water. And he's saying, look, as far as you can see, as far as you can count, I don't think we can count all the stars in heaven. He was telling Abram, I'm going to bless you, and you're going to be a father of many nations. And you're going to be blessed endlessly, unlimited. I'm here to tell you tonight that that promise is for you and I, that the blessings will not stop, that he is going to bless you as long as you trust, as long as you believe, as long as you have the faith to put in God's hands. God is in the business of blessing our lives tonight, and he's getting ready to send you into that next season of blessing. I don't know what your next season looks like. I'm going to ask him to come. I don't know what your next season looks like. But I know this, that you're going to get blessed. You can sense it. You can see it. You feel it, right? It's like, wait, wow, what's going to happen next? Guys? Like, we can't wait. We can't wait. Some of you can't even wait to go to sleep to get up in the morning. It's like Christmas, right? Like, what's going to happen tomorrow morning? God, you're going to bless me. You're going to give me a promotion. You're going to open doors for me. God, you're going to do some. There's some great news coming my way because I've been hanging on. I've been looking through. I've been pressing in. I've been saying, God, I haven't given up on that promise that you gave me when I was in the men's home in that prayer closet. God, I haven't given up on that promise. God, prepare me. Set me up. Do what you need to do because I'm ready to move into that next season tonight I want you to stand this evening lift up your hands to heaven and I want you to visualize whatever stage you're in tonight if God is preparing you for that blessing if God has positioned you for that blessing listen these signs aren't just having signs just so we can look cute but it's a visual it's a visual so that way when you go home in the morning and you start going, oh, shatarabasi. And you start seeing, oh, God, you're preparing me. God, you're positioning me. God, you're allowing me to possess. God, I see it. God begins to reveal himself in that time of prayer. So tonight, as every hand is lifted tonight, I don't know what. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what's going on. But I know this, that he's preparing you for that next season. He's preparing you for that next season. Come on, lift up your hands. Start picturing your marriage. Start picturing your children. Start visualizing your future. Start visualizing this next season of your life. Listen, 
I know that we've, we've already evaluated. We've already looked. It's already March, and we're thinking, God, what, what's our plans this year? What's our goals this year? What's in front of us this year? Come on, I want you to start thinking about it. Because God's promises will not come back void. His word will not come back void, but it will go and do, do, go forth and do what it's called to accomplish to do within our lives. Lift your hands to heaven and begin to declare it. God, I want to go into this next season blessed. God, I'm ready for the blessing. Oh, Jesus, we love you tonight. Somebody's daughter is going to get saved. She's going to get delivered. She's going to get rescued. She's going to come and she's going to be part of our choir. Somebody's son is going to get rescued. He's going to be preaching behind this pulpit. He's going to be speaking the words of life. Somebody's cousin in jail is going to be delivered, set free. And right when they come out, they're going to come to church. You're going to be their leader. You're going to disciple them. Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody's body is getting healed. God is healing your body. You've been saying, I can't shake off this sickness. But God is declaring healing over your body. He's declaring healing over your mind. He's declaring healing over you. Oh, come on, somebody. Lift up your hands to heaven. Declare it. God is restoring somebody tonight. He's restoring a relationship tonight. You haven't talked to somebody in years, but God has been putting them in your heart. God is telling you it's time to forgive. It's time to let go. It's time to move into that next level and begin to let go of the past and begin to forgive and say, oh, here I am, God. A man of mercy, a man of grace. Tonight as every hand is lifted, I don't know if this spoke to everybody, but if it spoke to you, then I want you to come to this altar and let it be a representation of you entering into that next season. Yes, yeah, some of you are coming, you're, you're crying, your tears are falling. It's because you know God is getting ready to bless you. Come on, if that's you, come to this altar tonight and let this place.